Hey guys, uh, how awesome to have an opportunity to just chat with you. I think God gave me a little bit of a gift. And the gift is, uh, in reality, two gifts, I think. And I'm very, very grateful. I have good hands. I make pretty things with these hands. And number two, uh, because my mom was a house cleaner, because I come from really nothing. I graduated from Harvard, but I come from nothing. Uh, is that I have an ability to use the language of the, of the public. I don't have this super... Uh, esoteric uh, bourgeois language that sometimes you hear in the ivory towers. I speak the language of the public. So because I love you guys so much, I'm just today going to discuss a little bit about uh, preventative medicine. A uh, very, very uh, important topic uh, in an America, in an English-speaking world that's really in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Uh, statistics are appalling. Almost 70 percent of um, all English speakers are above weight and uh, more than 30% are morbidly obese and uh, today when I, when I left medical when I went to medical school in 83 oh my gosh uh, things which were very rare uh, breast cancer was a disease of women in their 50s and 60s today I see in 20 and 30 year olds um, okay guys so as you know the American training is the best in the world uh, like Dr. Oz, he's not only a heart surgeon, but he's a general doctor. He deals with a lot of general topics. I am a plastic reconstructive surgeon, but I've done endless, endless shows uh, on uh, just general medicine. Today, I want to talk about preventive medicine. So let's start with the most important point. No matter how healthy you are, the recommendation is one checkup per year. No matter how healthy you are. Why? Um, our... Um, Senses are rudimentary, rudimentary. Many times we use fever, pain, uh, uh, scratching as an indication something's wrong. But there are very severe conditions that have no symptoms, no symptoms, okay? I'll give you an example. You know, I operate in Beverly Hills. I live in Southern California. Um, melanoma, my gosh. Subungal melanoma, wow, that will kill you in three weeks. Uh, that has no symptoms, has no pain, has no masses, has nothing, nothing. So, um, very important to do a checkup every year, okay? That's the most important point of this little YouTube uh, video today. But let's talk about some uh, very simple ways to stay healthy. You guys, uh, all diets fail. I wrote uh, a diet book in English. I uh, was all over the world and uh, for the Hispanic Latin world. Uh, you don't have to buy that. I don't even know if it's in print anymore. It doesn't matter. I'll teach you today. Very simple. Uh, the Paleolithic diet. All diets fail. Please listen to me. All diets fail. You look great for two weeks. Third week, the weight comes back, and even more. You were just dehydrated. That's why it worked. You were dehydrated. We are designed to live the Paleolithic diet. What is that? Here's really simple. Fake, hopefully it never happens, that your airplane fell in the Brazilian Amazon. What would you eat in the Amazon? Lots of fruits. My gosh, a coconut would hit you in your head. A mango would hit on your head. <laughs> Lots and lots of fruits, lots and lots of animal protein. There's all kinds of animals and, and fishes in the Amazon. What would you not find in the Amazon? No wheat, which is a total poison. No corn. The corn of the Aztecs 500 years ago was okay, but the crazy scientists modified it to make a thing that looked like grass uh, today. Uh, into this yellow plump thing okay so um, full of calories and zero nutrition how do we fatten pigs I was adopted by American missionaries who are farmers we fatten pigs with corn and wheat okay so paleolithic diet is the only diet that works because we're designed to live a paleolithic diet what does paleolithic means paleolithic means prior to modern agriculture okay 
uh, would be about the time of Moses, Abraham. Did Moses cultivate the land of Judea? No! He wandered to the desert. He ate manna. He ate quail. Read Genesis. Okay. Paleolithic diet is really simple. I want you to eat every four hours. Why? Your liver only has a glycogen storage of three to four hours. After glycogen is kind of like the, the gasoline of your brain. After three or four hours, uh, what happens? Your body does not uh, digest that little bit of fat you have in your flanks, inner thigh, arms. It doesn't. It keeps that for a rainy day. Except in America, we don't have rainy days. In Europe, we don't have rainy days. In South Africa, we don't have rainy days. So the body first attacks the muscles. Why is that? It's called catabolism. Why is that important? That is important because muscle burns fat at night. Very important. Think about it. two engines on a train parked at the train station overnight with the engines on which engine is gonna burn more coal the huge train or the little train the huge train obviously so women need to have tone in men muscles because it burns these dangerous calories during your sleep okay so paleolithic diet fruits vegetables and animal protein it can be eggs anything with a face basically okay that's called thermogenesis yes that piece of meat this big has 400 calories you're absolutely correct but it requires 600 calories to burn it and 24 hours whereas those two pieces of bread are going to make you swell up two centimeters overnight they go in your bloodstream 15 minutes so the Bible's correct what did Jesus feed the 5,000 fish and rye bread rye bread what well, if you're not Christian uh, perhaps you're Muslim or perhaps you're uh, Jewish what did uh, Moses feed the 2.5 million leaving Egypt he uh, fed them um, birds and he fed him uh, manna. And I guarantee you manna was low fat. Um, anyhow, people, quail is open Genesis, the books of Moses. And you're going to see that Moses fed them quail. Okay, so paleolithic diet is eating every, every four hours because we only have a four hour, three, four hour storage of glycogen in our liver. And we don't want to break down our muscles. And uh, primarily one hand of animal protein thermogenesis which burns fat and two or three hands of fruits and vegetables why meat only has one problem it lowers your ph and fruits and vegetables raise it back up okay supplementation if you're in the jungle brazilian jungle as the analogy example we used you would eat 200 plants and you eat about 100 animals from a tiny little worm to the huge deer today we eat five of the most dangerous plants in the world Wheat, peanuts, uh, potato, rice, corn, the most dangerous one. Why? Lectin. Google the word lectin. And these seeds, not even rats, go to the big silos in the farms full of wheat. No rats. No rats. Uh, lectin causes all the syndrome, syndrome uh, this modern syndrome diseases, the metabolic diseases, diabetes, heart disease, uh, circulation problems. Uh, autoimmune problems all caused by wheat, corn, rice. Okay, so seeds are the enemy. Only one seed is good, oats. Oats is one of the few plants that gives muscle. How interesting. Grape, oats, and sweet potato. One of the few plants that gives muscle with exercise. So seeds are the problem. Fruits and vegetables and meats are the winners okay paleolithic diet neolithic means modern agriculture uh the poisons like wheat corn started big big poisons that's the problem society today poisoned by wheat corn rice etc all right so paleolithic diet okay now exercise how lucky we are today we're in an era where there's wonderful gyms worldwide literally worldwide i even found 
great gyms in the Amazon. I swear to God. But uh, reality is, after dinner, after dinner, go out your front door and walk your whole block. If you do that every night, you're going to turn into a stick, a very healthy stick, and uh, you're going to live, you know, a good old life span. Okay? So, what mom has time to go two hours to the gym, half an hour to get there, one hour there, half an hour to come back? No one has that time. Or you build a little uh, uh, gym in your house, or you just go out the front door and walk around your block. So, I talked about Paleolithic diet. Walking every night after dinner to burn dinner. The enemy is dinner. Burn it before you go to bed. Okay? Okay, guys, look what I took a little break. Look what I found. This is the corn of the Aztecs. Looks almost like a, and this is magnified. Looks like a grass. The crazy scientists created this yellow, full of calories, no nutrition. Corn, huge poison. Okay? So, uh, happiness. I, uh, today, uh, there seems to be an embarrassment about spirituality, which I guarantee will have a disastrous outcome because we are flesh and bones, but also we have a soul. And uh, good doctors are, do not ignore the soul. Um, so let's talk a, lot, a little bit about the soul. I like the, uh, uh, the, the sacred books, whether it be uh, the... Um, Muslims, uh, uh, the Quran, or the, uh, the, the books of Moses for the Jewish people, uh, Taoists, uh, uh, lots and lots of good scriptures, you guys. There's always a little bad in every one of them, but mostly good. Uh, and one area is happiness. Look what uh, the books of Moses say about happiness. It says, be of good cheer, period. It doesn't say, be a good cheer if life is good. As a matter of fact, life is tough for everyone. Life is supposed to be tough. It's a test. So, let's be happy. Awful things have happened in my life, and I chose to be happy. And look, I'm 55, almost 55, and I stay relatively young. Okay, let's be happy. The hormone cortisol, which comes from unhappiness, stress, ages you very rapidly, destroys all your organs, cre helps create that abdominal fat which will be your end. So let's choose to be happy. Happiness is a choice. So important in preventative medicine. If you ever had a bitter, angry parent, you will know that's a huge, huge cross for you to carry when you had a parent who was always sad. Let's be happy. Um, meditation. What's killing to people today, one of the things that are killing people is stress worldwide. Much more, uh, the, the speed of life is vast increase. We're overwhelmed with information. Uh, we're overwhelmed with demands in every direction. We're better, better more involved parents. Uh, there are less jobs. Lots of stress, bottom line. So we have to learn how to manage this creation of cortisol, the hormone of stress, which is made by your suprarenal gland. It is necessary running away from that German shepherd who's trying to eat you alive, but otherwise it is very dangerous, it's like radiation. We need radiation in diagnostics, occasionally in uh, 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 military sec uh, uh, security, but radiation will kill you. So good and bad. It's like estrogen. Estrogen makes you a woman, but estrogen also gives you breast cancer. So good and bad, same substance. Um, so cortisol is very dangerous, the hormone of stress. People, just simple meditation vastly drops blood pressure. 